help me. Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com and today we're going to be talking all about noise cancelling headphones. Specifically, we're going to be comparing three of the more high-end noise cancelling headphones with the Focal Batiste right here, the Mark Levinson 5909 right here, and the Bowers & Wilkins PX8. Bowers & Wilkins? Bowers & Wilkins? I never know how to say it. And the goal with all of this testing for me has been to see how the more expensive or the higher end ones kind of measure up with all things to do with, you know, sound quality, but also features and performance for noise canceling because these are noise canceling headphones. So in this video, I will be covering these three primarily, but I'm also going to be drawing comparisons to the rest of these. So you can get a sense of the relative differences. Now, before diving in, I have a couple of disclaimers that I want to get out first. Each of these three headphones is available for purchase on headphones.com. And these are all productive units and I haven't been paid to say anything in particular about them. No punches are going to be pulled with this and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Now the second disclaimer is that we're not going to be doing any sound demos for these for the sound quality portion of this video and there are reasons for that. There are a lot of channels out there that do sound demos so maybe that's something you might expect from a video like this one but we're not currently doing them because without the right approach they're bound to be very misleading and yes i am aware that there are better and worse versions of sound demos out there but the reality is that even in the best cases they're not going to be accurate representations of how the headphones sound and the reason for this is that you can't control what the playback equipment is of the people who are listening to the sound demos so you don't know if somebody's listening on like you know, a bass cannon or, you know, their phone speaker in a bathroom. You, you can't control for that. And I don't want to say that we're never going to do sound demos or anything like that because there are ways to minimize the effects of that, but that's going to be a whole process and a thing that we do. So you're just going to have to wait on that. And the last disclaimer I want to mention here is that because these are our active noise canceling headphones with a whole feature set and an app and all kinds of different things going on with them, there's inevitably going to be things that you guys are going to care about that I'm not able to cover in this video. Watching me drone on and on is already cruel and unusual punishment enough. And specifically what I'm going to be focusing on here is the importance of sound quality because I'm on that mission to try and find what are actually good sounding noise cancelling headphones because I feel that, you know, for the most part, companies are focusing far too much attention or, you know, by and large, they're focusing more attention on, you know, feature sets and other things, potentially gimmicks rather than sound quality. So that's really what this video is about. That's what this search is all about for me. I'd encourage you guys to look up reviews of these individual products on their own, um, not just from our channel, but just, you know, everywhere. Be informed. Make sure you have as much information as possible. So with that out of the way, let's get right into this comparison, starting with build quality, design, and comfort. So for the aesthetic and industrial design of each of these, I mean, this is all extremely subjective stuff. Um, you know, how you want them to look is totally up to you. Uh, but I'm going to rank them for me like this. In first place for the aesthetic, you know, and the industrial design, Design is going to be the PX8, uh, then the Focal Batiste, and then the 5909. Now, the PX8 has this sleek and sturdy and elegant look to it that doesn't really command all that much attention, but when you do notice it, you notice how good it looks. It's a much more kind of blend into the background kind of thing, but it has a really classy design aesthetic that really speaks to me. You know, the, the Focal here is a, it's clearly a very beautiful object. Uh, but this is definitely a more attention grabbing, almost like fashion statement uh, piece. And you know, it has these you know tapered magnesium yokes here. It is that thing that draws your attention to it more. And um, I think that the 5909 is even more like that with, well, this one's red. I, I think I prefer the look of the black one here. I'm not a huge fan of this sort of silver ring around the back here. I feel like it would draw a little bit too much undue attention. And that's really what I like about the PX8 is that um, this is, again, that kind of no-nonsense, extra-regular-looking kind of thing that really speaks to me and, uh, you know, the, the design aesthetics that I enjoy. For build quality, time will tell on these. In my experience, headphones that feel really sturdy out of the gate can sometimes have specific failure points that really only show up after long-term use, so they don't really reveal themselves right away when you're just sort of looking at them and holding them and, and, you know, picking them up and stuff. But I have to say, though, that the PX8 also does feel like it's the most sturdy, like it's gonna last a long time. Like everything about the way that just the pieces move on this is just so sleek and sturdy and it feels like refined somehow. Like there's just a subtle amount of pressure when you kind of turn everything. And for the others, while they are fine, I think that they feel, you know, like they're made of premium materials. I'm gonna give the PX8 the win for that. There's one consideration here with the build quality uh, and it's that with the Focal, uh, the, the pads are removable, but when you remove them, um, the you'll see that the little pla plastic piece to sort of snap the snap the pads back in place 
it's this very thin kind of plastic. So I would be very careful and cautious about doing this too many times because I feel like that could be something that wears out if you do it too much. So now let's talk about comfort. For me, that's where the Focal Batiste is the winner. It's the most comfortable for me, for my head. But of course, my head is also monstrous. So I had Taryn help me out with this. Um, he's got an objectively better head size and shape, and it's likely to be more representative of the majority of folks uh, than I am. So I'll throw him up on the screen here and you can see how it looks on him. But in my testing, they were all reasonably comfortable, not too heavy. I think that's one of the benefits of these headphones is that they're meant to be mobile and portable. Um, and so I found them all to be reasonably comfortable. The PX8 is definitely the one that has the strongest clamp force out of the gate. But I found that actually over time, even I was able to, you know, wear this for a full day and it, it didn't really bother me. I kind of got used to it and the cushions are very soft. So they take, you know, the brunt of that clamp. But I do find that, um, you know, I actually have no problem at all getting through a full day with Focal Batiste um, and with the 5909. The only thing with this one is that there's a bit of a hot spot uh, pressure point at the top of my head uh, when I wear this one. But, you know, the clamp force uh, is, is okay as well. The one other thing here is that uh, the pads on this one, they don't feel quite as compliant, even though they're still quite nice. Uh, they feel a little bit more compliant on the Batiste and uh, very nice on the uh, PX8 as well. So for comfort, they all get a thumbs up from me, but I think that the winner for that is the Batiste. Now let's talk about how well they perform at noise canceling. You know, the, uh, the reason you might be considering these headphones over passive headphones in the first place. Now, ideally I wanted to have a setup where I could do sound demos for this specific thing to be able to show kind of like, how the attenuation is for folks and let them actually hear that. But again, that's where there's a whole science and process behind that um, that's needed in order for that to be accurate. So at the moment, I'm gonna show you some of the ANC results among these three uh, measured results. So what you're seeing here is basically the amount that it attenuates and lower is better in this, uh, in what I'm showing you guys here. The key takeaway for ANC performance is that the PX8 is the best uh, overall, followed by the 5909. And then in last place is the Focal Batiste. Now the interesting thing here where I was comparing with some other noise canceling headphones is that none of these three actually perform as well as the top dogs in this space. Those among the ones that I've tested here are the Sony WH-1000XM5 and the Apple AirPods Max. Those do both still attenuate more than these, these three, right? But with that said, these three, they are still somewhat competitive with other ANC headphones like the Sennheiser Momentum 4s right here. And one thing to be mindful of with all of these well, specifically these three, because that's what we're sort of evaluating here, but just in this ANC testing that I was doing when I was comparing these other ones as well, they all tend to do better at attenuating sounds for different frequency ranges. So for example, the PX8 does the best at attenuating higher frequencies, while the 5909 and the Batiste do better at lower frequencies. So depending on the specific environment that you're in, you're likely to get different results for which one among these actually attenuates more. And I think that's also like they're designing around different areas where they think noise is the largest problem area. So like some are specifically designing for airplane noise and then that might be where things are you're going to be quieter or more attenuated. Um, so that's just something interesting to note. But now let's talk about the sound quality. Um, and for those who are new to this, we can evaluate sound quality by looking at headphones frequency response measured on industry standard test equipment like the Gross here. And if you can't, I'm just going to take this headphone off so you can see there's an ear on a plate. Yay. <laughs> so what we do is we evaluate the frequency response of the headphone relative to a smoothed reference target to get a general sense of the headphone sound signature. But of course, there's more to it than just that. And there are places where the frequency response can and should deviate from the target because it's highly smoothed. But with this, we can get a reasonable picture of how headphones are going to sound for most people. So let's dive into the sound analysis, starting with the 5909 from Mark Levinson right here. And I'm gonna show you guys here both the passive and active modes. Okay, so let's go through it here and remember that what we're looking at here is the raw graph, not the compensated one, and we do not want the raw graph to measure like a flat line uh, because we're taking this measurement at the eardrum or simulating what the measurement will be at the eardrum. Um, and we can see that the base uh, follows basically the reference target, basically the reference target, get it, uh, reasonably well. Uh, just keep in mind, this is with ANC off, and I'm gonna show you what, what it looks like with ANC on the active mode, uh, but with ANC off, you can see that the bass is pleasantly boosted into the sub bass. That's kind of what you want to see. A little bit of a mid bass bump, but it's it's nice. It's fine. It's good. And then the 5909 tracks reasonably well all the way up into the mid range with a little bit of mid mid range forwardness. 
um, good upper ear gain presence up to 3K, uh, so things come across with a lot of clarity. Uh, you know, your your vocals aren't muffled, your piano tones come through with good clarity. That's exactly what you want there. Maybe just a little bit of honk, though, because of the mids are just a little bit forward, but for the most part, this is pretty solid. And then uh, the only issue, really, with the Mark Levinson 5909 to my ear, and also confirmed by the measurement here, uh, is the treble peak at around 10k. When we go to the active mode here, uh, you can see there are a number of changes. One of them is that that peak becomes a little bit more noticeable because it is a narrower peak and the regions around it, above it, are not quite as elevated. Um, and so this becomes a little bit more noticeable with ANC on. And then also you get a bit of a mid-range dip. Uh, this goes down below the target and it turns what is you know previously a somewhat neutral kind of starting point to a little bit more of a V-shaped or U-shaped kind of sound signature. But on the whole, um, you know, for the rest of the tuning here, it's not that bad. It's actually uh, reasonable. Uh, you get good clarity, as I mentioned. It's just that this zingy, fatiguing quality in the treble, uh, it does get to me a little bit. I think if you're an older listener, this isn't going to be as much of an issue. But if you are younger, there's a chance that this can come across as particularly fatiguing. So just keep that in mind. You know, not everybody is going to be as treble sensitive or bothered by this, but I do find it to be, uh, yeah, a bit fatiguing there uh, for my ear. You can see here uh, the teal dashed line or whatever it is, uh, is with the ANSI off, so that's passive mode, and then the red line, you can see kind of the dip there in the mids. That's what happens. And this is with the same seating, right? So I'm not taking the headphones off and putting them on. That is one thing with all of these headphones. These are extremely difficult to measure, and there's so many results that you get where you can tell clearly there's it's not representative because the seal is broken or whatever, right? So thankfully, <laughs> in this case, I'm it's literally just pushing a button. So I do think it's quite a bit better in the passive mode, the ANC off mode. Uh, ANC on, I think it's something that they could dial in a little bit. Um, the firmware for this, I updated it to the most recent one as of recording this. So November 2022, maybe they'll change it in the future, but this is um, how it is right now. And I think they could still do a little bit more, you know, to kind of fix the mids and, and you know, curb that upper treble zing a little bit. But apart from that, uh, this is a pretty solid result uh, overall. Uh, let's move on now to the Focal Batisse. So here's the Focal Batisse. And just one thing to note with the Batisse is that it doesn't change uh, depending on the different mode that it's in. And that includes the 3.5 millimeter mode. So this is an always active headphone. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. The result here, let's talk about that. So what we get with the Batisse is a little bit more of a thicker presentation, a little bit warmer, more relaxed presentation overall. The big thing to pay attention to here is, of course, the dip at around 900 hertz. Um, and I think when I first posted this measurement, you know, that's what folks were kind of commenting on. They said it looks pretty good for the most part, except for that 900 hertz dip. Now, here's the thing with this. You can see there's so many different seatings here. And this was, again, one I... I I took a couple seatings initially, but I've taken a lot more since. And uh, actually, shout out to VSG over at Tech Power Up, who uh, also confirmed that depending on the clamp pressure that you apply, you're going to get a pretty different result here in the mids. Because the on the Batisse, the pad compression is, it's like... Uh, super compliant and then very very soft so you're going to get some different results there depending on how large your head is on how how you know the coupling is for you and so because of that i had to do some manual sweeps here to confirm exactly what it was that i was hearing and kind of how it lined up on the rig and the big thing I was listening for initially was whether or not I could hear that 900 hertz dip or how significant it was. What I found was that, yes, I could hear it a little bit, like it, it, it is a little bit quieter in this region, but not nearly as much as it looks. But instead, what I actually noticed was that the region above it, so 1.5K, is more pronounced. I think it's more that it's just exacerbated because of this 900 hertz dip. And that bump is actually present on Focal's other headphones as well. So this might be part of Focal's unique driver tech that they're doing. And then the same thing for 3K, the highest part of the ear gain there. You can see there's actually quite a significant difference there depending on the clamp pressure that's applied. And uh, for my ear as well, when I was doing that manual sweep, I did hear that as a little bit forward as well. So you have kind of two bumps going on here that are noticeable um, that I think are more just pronounced as a result of the, the dip at around 900 hertz. Overall, for the rest of the tuning here, um, it's definitely got some coloration and flavor to it, but 
it's more that the, that coloration is just a slightly relaxed presentation for anything that would otherwise be fatiguing. And so you can think of this as a, you know, slightly more relaxed presentation than what you get on the 5909. But it is one that because it doesn't have that upper treble, you know, zing peak that the 5909 has i find the batiste to actually be the one that is more pleasant sounding uh, overall now let's move on to the bowers and wilkins px8 and unfortunately this one is not great okay it's pretty rough with the px8 there are two very consistent results that i got on the rig when i was doing the measurements depending on the positioning that i had what I'm showing you guys here is the best version of that <laughs> because the other common result that I got with a slightly different positioning on the rig was truly horrible. This one, it's it's more just that it's got a couple of harmonic imbalances in the treble and then really strong, boomy, thick, muddy, overbearing bass. Having lower harmonics like this significantly boosted you know, over the upper harmonics it's the kind of thing that makes it so that your percussive hits, your cymbal tones, your snare drums, those types of things sound very compressed. Yeah, it causes this, this headphone to just not really sound on the same level as the other two. And that is in the active mode. Now I'm showing you guys the passive mode uh, or the comparison between the active and the passive mode. So when I say active and passive modes, active means both ANC on and the ambient mode. So when there is the, the digital signal processing going on, um, the dotted line here that I'm showing you is in passive mode. So this is all with the the same seating as, as one of the results there. So you can see that in passive mode, you actually get a more distinct bass boost, which is better, but it's still too much, I would say. We can say that the bass is a preference thing, but it's specifically those, those harmonic imbalances in the treble that I was able to identify with the manual sweep um, and it, it's confirmed on the graph as well. Um, I think for me that they're in a slightly different spot. I think they're a little further down, but yeah, they're still there. So here's how I think about the tonality for these three. Both the Focal Batiste here and the Mark Levinson 5909 give you two different flavors of reasonable sound quality. I'm just gonna put it that way, or like a reasonable tonality because it's hard to know what everybody's preference is going to be. But in general, I find that the Focal Batiste is the one that has the most pleasant sound out of the two as the 10K resonance on the 5909 is just a little bit too intense for me. If you're an older listener or you are you know you're not trouble sensitive, then this might be less of an issue for you than it is for me. And it's worth keeping that in mind. The PX8, unfortunately, is pretty rough for its tonality. And I would place many, many headphones ahead of it for sound quality. It's unfortunately just not that great sounding. But that's just how this looks on a graph. For the subjective aspects of sound quality that are harder to pin down in frequency response, let's talk about that. I think that what a lot of folks are wondering is, you know, how close does the Batiste and the Mark Levinson and maybe even the PX8 get to that kind of audiophile sound? Does it bridge the gap between, you know, the passive wired headphones, you know, like these ones here and the wireless noise canceling ones? And out of these three, I'm gonna say that the Batiste is the closest to that, being more clear and incisive for the trailing ends of tones, the finer little nuances in the music come through with a little bit more clarity with these than they do on the AirPods Max, for example, or the Momentum 4 or the Sony, you know, XM, five or whatever that one is, but I don't think it achieves the kind of sound quality possible with passive headphones. And I don't think we should expect it to. And with the Mark Levinson 5909, it's kind of the same story. It's not that this does anything particularly bad on the technicalities front, right? There's no blunting for the trailing ends of tones. It's reasonably incisive here. None of them really hit with the kind of impact and authority that you might get with one of these. You know, and, and I do find that when using them wirelessly, there is still that Bluetooth compression aspect of the sound. And I don't think that's something that can really be overcome regardless of how good the technology is in it. So unless we're doing something else, or running it somehow in wired mode, uh, I think that's still something that you have to um, contend with. So the bottom line here is that when it comes to the intangibles, there's nothing really bad about these that I would attribute to anything other than just the fact that it's wireless and Bluetooth and not wired and passive. And with the PX8, while it also doesn't sound blunted for trailing ends of tones um, or anything where you're like listening forward to hear more of you know the final little nuances that you know are in the music, it's just that the harmonic imbalances in the treble make it sound very, very compressed. And while this isn't a really a knock against the other intangible qualities, which are again, fine. It's bad enough to where those benefits aren't really able to come through all that much. So they're kind of lost as a result of the presentation overall. It's also important to remember that for these types of headphones, sound quality isn't everything. 
And it's worth discussing some of the additional features and potential deal breakers, even if for me, the PX8's sound quality itself is a deal breaker. So each of these has an app uh, with a number of different functions, the most important of which for audio files, in my opinion, is the ability to tune the headphones with a custom EQ. Now currently, because they could update the apps at some point, the Focal Batiste is the most flexible for that because it does give you a five band EQ with a number of predefined presets as well. The only downside is that in order to use this, you have to have music playing, which is a little bit odd. Now the Mark Levinson app only has a bass shelf option where you can add or reduce the bass. In my view, this is not the thing that needs adjusting on this headphone, and I wish they had just used the much more feature-rich and functional app in the AKG N700 NC Mark II. So the fact that the EQ functionality on this one is quite limited may be a deal breaker for you. Um, and I think for me, that is one of the things that I go, Ugh. And on the PX8, you do have the ability to adjust the bass in the treble, but it's not fine-grained enough to fix some of the harmonic imbalances throughout the treble. For some of the other deal breakers, this is where I got to talk about the non-sound related things that might make people a little bit ornery when using these. So with the Mark Levinson, I actually had a hell of a time trying to get it to connect and pair with different devices, regardless of the brand of the phone or the type of device it was. And it was to the point where I had to do multiple factory resets to get the app to connect. Um, so it kept saying connection timeout or something like that. Uh, the other two headphones, they just sort of connected automatically with the app and everything without any issues for me. Another deal breaker potentially with a Mark Levinson is that it also has a tiny little bit of background hiss on both of these units. So I don't think it was just a unit, you know, variation thing. Now it's not loud enough where it's going to be, you know, audible when music is playing. It's not going to intrude or anything like that when you're actually using it. But in quiet moments, I did find it to be audible and enough where it was a little bit annoying. And both of these other headphones are basically dead quiet when it comes to noise. And actually all of the rest of these ANC headphones are basically dead quiet as far as I can tell, um, with the exception of maybe the UX3000 also having a tiny little bit of hiss there. But for the most part, um, you know, everything else is pretty solid there. So it makes me think that the technology for these noise canceling headphones has progressed to a point where we should expect no background hiss. So that's a bit of an issue. Now, moving on to the Batiste, uh, this headphone is always on when you use it. And even though it does have a 3.5 millimeter connection, you still need to have the headphone be on in order for it to make sound, in order for it to, to work. Now, the good thing about this is that it retains the same sound signature as when being run in the other modes. But these batteries also don't last forever. I actually think that's something to be considering with all of these noise canceling headphones to a certain extent. It's just that with the Batiste, you get a 3.5 millimeter connection here, and it feels like it should be for passive mode, but it's not. So that's just something to be aware of. And Focal has actually confirmed that they can replace the battery if it dies, so you won't be stuck with a dead headphone years down the road, but the cost of that service has not been confirmed, so I actually have no idea how much that's gonna be. And I guess we don't know until that happens. Now on the PX8, the only feature related quirk that I noticed was that I had to download a separate music app, which felt like a bit of an unnecessary step. And that app itself was a little bit clunky to use. Um, so I kind of wish that it was just a little bit simpler like it was with these other two as far as actual, you know, using their their app and the software there. But apart from that, I didn't really find any other, you know, deal breakers or quirks with the PX8. It's just that the sound quality was the deal breaker on this one. So out of these three, here's how I'm going to sum things up. I find the Batiste sounds the best and is the closest to an audiophile grade ANC headphone that currently exists, or at least out of the ones that I've evaluated. Maybe there's other ones because I definitely haven't evaluated everything and I will continue <laughs> to do so. But just speaking personally, I do find myself reaching for the Batiste and just using it in the USB DAC mode over passive closeback alternatives, uh, especially in busier environments. So. Uh, I, I think it's it's one of those where it's maybe not quite on the same level as passive audiophile headphones, but it's not that far off. And the noise canceling benefit here, it is regularly worthwhile, even if the Batiste also has the weakest noise canceling performance of the bunch. So if you know you really need to cancel noise, uh, I'd say the existing kings of the noise canceling space, like the XM5 or the AirPods Max, or maybe something from Bose, they're still likely to serve you better regardless of the sound quality of the Batiste. The Mark Levinson, it seems like a good platform for them to build on if they can find a way to reduce that 10K peak issue and some of the other you know, additional little quirks there like the background hiss. At $1,000, I feel it's not too much to ask. And really the software should include more EQ filters since Harman's other brand, AKG, is already great at the app side of things with the NC700 Mark II. So this would be a top contender and maybe it will be in the future if they can iron out some of those quirks with a firmware update or something like that. It's been a year, but yeah, maybe, maybe in the future we can see more of this platform. 
do a little bit better. And the PX8 is one where I think you really need to be into the sleek design aesthetic for it to be worthwhile, or the fact that the ANC here is stronger. And I know this is gonna sound harsh, but in my opinion, it really does not belong in the audiophile space when we're talking about sound quality. Like if words have meaning here, sound quality, good sound quality should just not apply to this headphone. And I think far too frequently we base our you know, assumptions on what's gonna sound good on the associated price point. And just to hammer that point home a little bit, um, you know, here's the final Audio UX 3000, which is a $150 noise canceling headphone that sounds categorically better than the PX8 along just about all dimensions that audio enthusiasts are likely to care about. Okay, it's maybe a little bit on the bassy side, but still, it's better than many of them and far better sounding than the PX8 at a much lower cost. And sure, it's not very feature rich, it doesn't look as sleek for the build and the design, but if sound quality is the most important thing to you, the UX3000 really shows that there are far better options at way lower price tags than what the PX8 can deliver. Now, I really hope they can improve on this in the future as the rest of the design here is really quite good. Um, and I'd love to see something with this kind of form factor sound, you know, even as good as this. And as far as the rest of the field goes when it comes to ANC headphones, after going through all of these for weeks, <laughs> while there are better and worse sounding options, it's clear to me that there's still a ways to go for noise canceling headphones or wireless headphones. Uh, to reach the sound quality of passive alternatives, at least for the good ones. It feels like many of these still focus on feature sets or integrations or sleek designs like the PX8 or ANC performance or other things that are gonna be nice to haves, but not necessarily the things that audio enthusiasts are going to be all that taken by or care the most about. So in conclusion, yes, for those wanting great sounding headphones that also do noise canceling, there are now some options to consider here with the 5909 and the Batiste and the UX3000. Um, and maybe an honorable mention to the Sennheiser Momentum 4, but I think that's gonna get its own video review, so stay tuned for that one. It's decent, let's just go there. But in my view, the key consideration from doing all of this testing is that sound quality with noise canceling headphones can be a bit all over the place. Maybe we should have expected that. We learned nothing. So you really can't expect that sound quality is always gonna be a priority. And I was really surprised actually at the spread of the results from these, uh, from generally solid for some of them to decent to really not that great, depending on which ones it is that you're looking at. And it's hard to know that. Um, but I think that's going to be it for me. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.